If you're the type of chap who finds wearing a tie uncomfortable, try sporting a suit of armour. Armour reached its peak during the battle-filled 15th century. Initially, it was made of chainmail. Then, for greater protection, knights began wearing plate armour, suits made from large pieces of steel. Today, armourers make this obsolete battle gear for historical reenactment buffs. This workshop specialises in custom-made suits of armour. The armourer has to take 45 different measurements just to prepare the pattern. He traces each pattern piece on a steel sheet that's about one and a half millimetres thick. Then he cuts along the trace line with a bandsaw. This is the breastplate, which covers the chest and abdomen. Now he begins to shape the piece using an automatic hammer. There's no mould or template to guide him. Now that he has the basic shape, he refines it using a handheld hammer. He strikes the metal against an upright log. A bag of lead beads cushions the blow. This prevents the metal from deforming. A few lighter blows in select spots finalize the shape. Until now, he's been hammering the inside of the breastplate. Now he works the outside. He smooths the metal surface, a process known as planishing. Now using a different automatic hammerhead, he stretches out the breastplate's bottom edge to form a rim angling outwards. He places the piece on an anvil, then using a hammer, planishes the rim. When you wear this heavy metal breastplate, the rim takes some of the weight off your shoulders by distributing it over your hips. The armourer checks the shape, then makes any necessary adjustments. Now, using several different hammers again, he works his way around the rest of the breastplate, gradually rolling the edge onto itself to form a rounded lip. This is a lengthy process. At each stage, the armourer shapes the metal slowly and carefully. You wouldn't want to upset that knight. Rolling the metal onto itself to form the lip reinforces the perimeter of the breastplate. And the rounded edge prevents the sharp metal from cutting the skin. The breastplate is now ready for the finishing touches. First, the armourer smooths the surface with medium grit sandpaper. Then with fine grit sandpaper. Then the last step, with fine grit paper and a polishing compound. Some breastplates have an articulated styling. For this model, the armourer uses three brass rivets to attach the sections. He fastens them loosely to enable the pieces to move. Then, using rivets again, he attaches leather straps. A suit of armour is made up of about 20 different components, such as the front and back shin guards, called greaves. Armour and leather gloves, called gauntlets. Shoulder pieces, called pauldrons. And of course, the helmet and visor. A knight would don his suit of armour from the bottom up. Otherwise, the weight of the top components would have him keeling over half-dressed. In the Middle Ages, a suit of armour cost as much as a small farm. It was a prized luxury only the nobility could afford. These suits cost thousands of pounds, so being a modern-day knight in shining armour doesn't come cheap either. <laughs>